Hello, everyone. Good morning and good afternoon. Welcome to join our webinar, How Emerald Publishing Service Benefit Your Journal. My name is Eddie Lai. I'm the Regional Market Manager at Emerald Publishing, and I will be moderating today's session. Before we start, I would love to inform you that all audience who joined this webinar are automatically in listen-only mode, which means you are muted. Please use the question pane if you have encountered any technical issue or have any questions. Now, it's a great pleasure for me to introduce our guest speaker. Today, we are very honored to have Dr. Stefan Hartman join us from the Netherlands. Dr. Hartman is the co-editor of Journal of Tourism Futures, and he is also the head of department at European Tourism Future Institute. It's wonderful to have you here, Dr. Hartman. Do you want to say hello to the audience? Of course. Uh, well, thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, yes, my name is Stephen Hartman. Um, we uh, at, at the European Tourism and Futures Institute. Uh, this is part of the, uh, the NHL Standing University of Applied Sciences in the Netherlands. Uh, well, we, we started our journal and I will talk about our journal, our experience with uh, operating the journal and our experience with, with Emerald. Um, yeah, it's a great pleasure to, to be here and to share the ex experiences with, with you. Yeah, thank thank you. you, Dr. Harman. Uh, I'm also joined by my colleague, Judy, the Publishing Service Manager at Emerald Publishing. Hi, Judy. Hi, all. Uh, I'm the Publishing Service Manager based in Taiwan. I'm the main services contact for journals published in East Asia, Southeast Asia, and Australasia. Thank you for coming to the webinar today. Okay, uh, for the audience coming from Japan, we also have Emerald's representative based in Japan with us today. Here is Takeshi. Hi, Takeshi. Hi. Hello. Uh, hello, uh, welcome to the EPS webinar uh, presented by uh, Emerald Publishing. Uh, え、本日はお忙しい中、え、当ウェビナーにご参加くださいましてありがとうございます。え、私、uh, next is uh, from uh, Korea re re representative, uh, Samu, okay? Yes, for well, audience coming from South Korea, we welcome Emerald's representative based in Korea, Song Woo. Hi, Song Woo. Hello, you can you hear me? Yes, yes. Uh, um, I'm throw throwing to connect the webinar now, so uh, now all, 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 everything is solved. Uh, my mm -hmm. name is Song Choi. Uh, I, I'm uh, working for Emerald based in Korea. I'm just in charge of the uh, Korea market. Um, uh, uh, not, not nice to meet you in, in webinars. Uh, so I really hope uh, this session will be helpful to all of them to share any good information uh, from from you guys. Um, and and I hopefully um, many people uh, wanted to should 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 join in the session but how many um uh, i really hope uh we can we can have a good we can share uh, any good information together that's it okay it's wonderful to have you all with us and uh, here is our agenda for the webinar as you can see we will begin with judy talking on open access and emerald publishing services then we will move on to Dr. Harman sharing his experience on journal management and then having a Q&A session. Uh, the whole session should be last around one hour. During this webinar, if you have any questions, please just type in the question via the questions pane. Our colleagues in the background will help sort things out or collect your questions and raise them up during Q&A session. Uh, we will be very much love to hear from you. Uh, I would also like you to let you know that the webinar is going to be recorded and will be sent to the email you registered via the automatic system from GoToWebinar platform and the next day of the session. Okay, great. And now I will hand it over to Judy. 
Okay, Judy, it's all yours now. Well, thank you, Ali, for the wonderful introduction. Can everyone see my slides now? Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. Thank mm. you. So today um, I'll be talking about Emerald Publishing Services. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, I'll introduce you to Emerald Publishing very briefly, and I'll be covering what we offer in the services and a little bit about open access. So Emerald Publishing was founded in 1967 in the UK. We have been in the publishing industry for more than five decades now. We are specialized in social science content and plot fields. We currently publish more than 300 journals alongside with books and case studies. We work with researchers in more than 130 countries and on average we enjoy 30 million downloads every year. In 2020, we have won Independent Publisher of the Year from the Independent Publishers Association. Uh, and we are also committed to real impact, UN SDGs and open access. So the main topic I'm going to cover in the first section would be um, Emerald Publishing Services. But before we go into the details of EPS, I'll be talking a little bit about open access. So open access by definition, uh, it means content that is made freely available to everyone for reuse and read. So here I've put a very commonly used definition released in 2002, where it mentions about free, freely available content um, for, for use as long as it's properly acknowledged and cited. So what's good about publishing in open access? First of all, because the content is free, freely available, it brings more exposure for the work and also it helps push the content beyond the academic bubble. So not only the researchers, but practitioners and policy makers will have access to the contents. And because of the wider audience open access contents can reach, it usually can generate higher citation rates. On the other hand, uh, nowadays, a lot of grant providers uh, will request uh, the content or the findings or research result to be published in open access to comply with the grant rules, especially in Europe. On the right hand side of your screen, you can see Creative Commons license, also called CC BY license. This is the copyright license that's commonly used for open access content by major publishers. So there are several different types of CC BY license. Here I'll, I've only listed out the most flexible ones. It's just CC BY. So as you can see, it aligns to the definition of open access, where the content can be used in multiple ways as long as attribution is given to the creator. There are also subcategories of CC BY license, like CC BY NC for non-commercial uses or CC BY ND for non-derivative uh, uses. For uh, more information on CC BY license, you can find it on their official websites. And then I'm going to uh, introduce you to some common uh, open access models that's provided by publishers nowadays. But before I go into the details, please bear in mind that open access is still is a very dynamic way of pub publishing and it is still evolving. So it is not unusual for you to see a new type of open access being created every other years. For example, recently Springer Nature has launched a new type of open access called guided open access. But here I'm just going to introduce you to some very commonly seen types. Uh, so let's begin with the image on your right hand side. So traditionally there's subscription types of journals where the readers need to pay to access the articles. So that's the subscription model, pay to read. And then we have different types of open access uh, that's paid to publish. And for subscription journals with an open access option that's called hybrid journals. So on your left hand side, start from the bottom, there's green OA. For green OA, it means for a paper to be published in subscription journal, it's that green OA. In the middle is gold OA, which I guess it's the option uh, 
a majority of you that's most familiar with. Gold OA is where the article is published in journals and the paper can be made open access. However, they also will have to cover the publication fee called APCs, article processing charges. And then on the top of the list, we have Platinum OA, also known as Sponsored OA or Diamond OA. This type of OA is very similar to Gold OA, where the article is published in the journals, it's peer reviewed or and typesetted, so it's not a manuscript version. However, the author doesn't have to pay the APC. The owner of the journal, usually institutions, universities, or academic associations, will cover the publication fees, and that's Platinum OA. Something to it is something worth noticing is that Platinum OA can only be applied on a journal level, so you won't see just single paper be published under Platinum OA. It has to be the whole journal because the journal owner will cover the fee for the whole journal instead of single individual articles. Also, Platinum OA is also the type of the models that's used by Emerald Publishing Services. And here, I guess this is uh, the term that we're all uh, unfortunately very familiar with in the past years. Um, why we see COVID-19 here? Because this is also some of one of the factors that's influencing open access trends, especially since 2020. So because of COVID-19, the need for open publishing options has increased, obviously, because the researchers is looking for a way of publishing that reduces time to publication and it's easier for them to share data and a way of research between the researchers. Therefore, this ecosystem of research is increasingly open because of the pandemic. Another trend that you might have heard of um, in recent years is Plant S. Although Plant S is now followed by a majority uh, of researchers, mostly in Europe, it is also influencing other parts of uh, the world as well. So what exactly is Plant S? Plant S is a mandate that guides the publication funded by Collegionist members where it asked the authors to publish in open access. Plan S came to effect in January this year. So Collegion S is a group of organizations that's funding the academic research. Most of these organizations are in Europe or UK, but there are more and more uh, organizations tend to join the group. So what options do authors have under Plan S? The first option is open access. So here we are referring to what we mentioned as Platinum OA or Gold OA, that also will have to publish in the OA journal or on OA platform that's indexed in DOAJ, Directory of Open Access Journals. This is a database that's recorded uh, a lot of open access journals in it. Or they have a second option of repository root. This equals to the green OA options that we mentioned in my previous slides, where the author can publish in a traditional sub subscription journal, but the author has to make a copy available in a repository, and there can't be any embargo. At the moment, very few publishers is offering green OA without an embargo, and Emerald is one of the publishers that's not requesting any embargo period. And the third option is transformative arrangement, which means the author can still publish in a subscription journal, but the article itself needs to be published in open access. And the journal itself needs to commit it to transform into fully open access journal in the near future. Here, I've only simplified the, the description of Plan S. And if you're interested in, to, in to more further information, you can try to visit their official websites. So let's go into what we actually offer in our publishing services. So what our services co covers three key aspects of publishing process. The first one is publishing, and then it's production. And finally, it's the dissemination of your journal content. 
we provide global reach for the published content. Here are some metrics just for your reference. On average, EPS Journal homepage views grow by five times within the two years of the partnership. And in 2020, the average download of EPS Journal content is more than 260,000 per month. Secondly, we specialize in high quality research. So as I mentioned previously that we currently publish more than 300 uh, journals at the moment. And among the 300 journals, uh, around 80 to 90 percent of them are indexed in Web of Science or Scopus. Also, because we support submission to indexing services, 80 percent of EPS application to Scopus were accepted. Last but not least is discoverability. All content published by Emerald will be hosted on Emerald Insight. This is a platform where researchers and students will be able to find resources through this platform to access Emerald published content. We also have partnership with discovery services such as Primo, ProQuest, EBSCO, WorkHat, and we do content configuration for Google Scholar. That means when people key, key in a keywords in Google Scholar, your published content will, will likely to show in the search result. So what we features in our package? Well, first and foremost is obviously Platinum OA. We use CC by license. Currently, this is the 4.0 version, and there's no APC, no charge to the authors. And because it's open access, so of course, no charge to the readers. Secondly, we offer publishing in infrastructure. This includes publishing and production. So for publishing side, there's submission and peer review system, plagiarism detection software, Web of Science Reviewer Locator. So what is a review locator? This is a tool that helps the editors to find suitable reviewers within the Web of Science databases for their journal. And then we help with submission to indexing services such as ESCII, Scopus, or DOAJ. We also provide performance reports to, for editors to evaluate the performance and development of, of their journals. And we also provide ethic and rights consultancy that's aligned to COPE guidelines. COPE is community, a committee of pub publication ethics. This is the committee that released uh, ethical guidelines for journals to follow. Production-wise, we produce article-level publishing, which means the article, once the article being accepted, it doesn't have to wait for other articles to be ready to go into an issue. It can go online first. It will be published in a place called Early Site on our website. And from that point onwards, the article will be able to accumulate its citations. We also do enhanced metadata that's including XML, HTML, traditional PDFs, and we, add, we help allocate DOIs to articles. And we also help you maintain the journal homepage and create a cover for you. And finally, there's about ownership and editorial independence, which is essential for the for journal. Working with EPS, the ownership will remain with the sponsor, usually the institution or university, so you will still own the journal. Emerald doesn't own any EPS journals. Also, you will have the editorial independence. The editorial responsibility will remain with the journal on owners. We won't interfere your editorial decision unless it is related to publication ethical issues. And on top of the services I just mentioned, we also have additional services that for, for you to choose. You can pick up some of these additional services to include in your core packages. Now, I'm going to talk about some of the questions I, I frequently got asked uh, by our audience regarding Emerald Publishing Services. First of all, what need you need to be considered uh, before you uh, work with EPS? Uh, the first thing is we need to know more about your journal. 
the more detail, the better. And we need to know your expectation of your journal. So for example, is it, do you have an existing journal or do you want to launch a brand new journal? Whether your journal is currently peer reviewed. Also at this stage, we only support content that's published in English. And finally, and most importantly, whether you're willing to publishing in open access. And then on the right hand side, it's about the funding. Because our minimum term of APS agreement is three years. So please, so if you're interested in APS, please make sure that you have sustainable sponsor or funding that can cover at least three years. Pricing wise, I understand that a lot of people are interested in to find out the pricing for EPS, but I'll have to be honest with you that it really varies from journal to journal because for one reason is publication frequency, how many issues you would like to publish within a year, and also the length of articles within your discipline, because it can vary from discipline to discipline. Some discipline has longer, longer articles than others. Also, the level of support or customized services that you might require for your journal. Secondly, is timing. So a lot of people ask me about how long does it take uh, for, for me to publish an article for my journal after I work with EPS. So the setup stage usually takes about three months, sometimes shorter. And then for submission, from submission to acceptance, we would take about two to eight months. This depends on, uh, for instance, how many revisions and articles might need or the responsiveness of your reviewers, because sometimes the reviewers take a long time to uh, feedback their comments. Once an article is accepted, it would take 32 business days for our production process. So in total, the first article published after the contract sign will be at least six months later. So here, just to summarize uh, my presentation, here is a, a rough view for you to see. We currently have more than 60 journals that's working with EPS. They are all over, all over the world in different regions. And we welcome you to join our portfolio and working with us to grow your journal further. And finally, I will be sharing my slides with you after this webinar. There are some hyperlinks. If you're interested, you'll be able to see, for example, how a journal homepage will look like and more details about our services. If you're interested to learn more or to introduce us your journal to, for us to know better your journal and provide a quote. For Japan audience, you can contact Mr. Eguji. For Korea audience, you can contact Mr. Choice. For audience from other regions, or if you have questions that directly related to the services, please feel free to contact me. My section will be ended here, and I'm going to hand it over to Dr. Harmon. And Dr. Harmon will share his experience in journal management and Emerald Publishing Services with us. Ellie, could you transfer the control panel, please? Yes. Thank you, Judy, for touching upon open access and EPS. And uh, now uh, I'm going to move on to Dr. Harmon. Please bear with me for a moment. Okay, Dr. Harman, the floor is all yours. Okay, just to confirm, can you see my presentation? Yes, yes, we can. Perfect, okay. Uh, yes, I'd like to share my experience with uh, working with Emerald. Um, as I uh, introduced myself before, my name is Stefan Hartman. Um, I work at the University of Applied Sciences in the Netherlands. Um, and we decided a couple of years ago in 2015 to, um, uh, to partner up with Emerald. Uh, we were in the uh, kind of fortunate position uh, to uh, to be able to do so, um, and we were also in a position to choose for the platinum open access option that we just uh, discussed earlier, meaning there's no charge uh, for the author. Um, I think this is a really uh, important aspect of the, the the choice that that we make and how we how we run uh, uh, our our journal. Um, also, we uh, have three we chose uh, three issues per year. Uh, per volume, um, this is what we, um, uh, yeah, 
this is part of our contract with uh, with Emerald. Um, you can also check out uh, the website of our journal uh, through the hyperlink uh, when the presentation is sent to you. Um, why we chose this um, uh, this journal is for a number of reasons. Um, because you can also, of course, always have to imagine why do we want to start this journal. Um, first and foremost, we wanted to um, have a debate and have an impact on the topic of tourism futures. This is what our institute is about. This is our identity. This is who we are and where we want to have our impact. And uh, of course, being researchers ourselves, um, uh, and we also have a, a number of, of senior researchers on board. Uh, for instance, Ian Yeoman from uh, uh, Victoria University um, uh, in, in, in Auckland, um, uh, and also in Wellington, um, and uh, my professor uh, colleague, uh, Dr. Albert Posma, uh, who is also a senior researcher in the field. Uh, we identified actually that futures thinking in tourism was not really well covered yet in, uh, in academia. There are a number of, of, of outlets where you can publish, and there are a number of um, yeah, where we see a, a focal point of uh, uh, publications, but still we thought, well, there's not a, a good outlet, a good journal that we can really use for, to, to stimulate thinking, futures thinking about tourism. Um, as I said, this really relates to the identity of our, uh, our institute, which was already founded uh, 10 years ago, but I think the idea of futures thinking at that moment, uh, 10 years ago, I think it was, uh, well positioned because of course if you look at the current situation uh, i think uh, nothing is more important than to look at the future of tourism in uh, times of covid 19. Uh, but most importantly for us at that moment when we uh, decided to uh, to partner up with emerald uh, we saw that it fills a gap in literature so we had the idea on the one hand it fits our identity on the other hand there's a gap in, li in, in literature um, and we can we can uh, fill this gap um, based on our own expertise our own uh, qualities and also build a community because that was also our uh, our idea behind this um because we see definitely the um the, the journal as a as an instrument as a tool for for a number of reasons um because also we are part of an educational institution i think that's very important that um through the journal we can set themes we can set uh, we can invite people for uh, to run special issues for instance and on selected topics which support our education directly um, our journal is very well used by our, um, uh, our students from our uh, bachelor programs and our master program, uh, which are annually about 1,800 students from all uh, nationalities. So we need to have open access, we need to have uh, uh, high quality, and we need to have, um, of course, English um, uh, uh, materials. Uh, for us, it's also a tool to expand our international academic community, um, because, of course, um, Publishing is something that every academic uh, needs to do, but also what we at some moment um, uh, decided to do is to have a special issue, a, uh, one a year. So out of the three issues that we publish, one is a, is a special issue, uh, which allows us to contact people at some moment to even have an open call, which is very exceptional to do, um, but it, it worked. It allowed us to, to partner up with uh, leading academics in, uh, in the field of tourism and particularly tourism futures. Um, so that that helps and by doing so it also supports the, the professional development of our own staff members which is, is something that is important uh, also for education reasons also to to um, go through the validation and accreditation of the of our um, um, uh, our, uh, our courses that we have so that's important there uh, and what we see also in the work field uh, by publishing, by running such a journal, by creating this uh, academic community, it really supports our credibility of our institute and its staff members. Um, and after all, it's also a, a marketing tool uh, for our institute itself, but also for our wider university. So these are just a, a mix of reasons that all fit together why we, uh, in 2015, decided to, uh, to launch this journal. Um, of course, it's a relatively young journal. It's only uh, six years old, and it's always good to reflect on how does it perform, because we have set our own goals, we have our ambitions with the journal. We thought that it would fill a gap in literature, but yeah, did it actually do so? 
So it's always good to look at the, at the statistics uh, and, and these were provided by Emerald and I think they show how our journal uh, grows uh, annually. <clears throat> of course, it needs time. I think that's something to be uh, 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 frank about. Um, in the first year, of course, you, you cannot expect that your journal is found immediately by everybody. Uh, I mean, it's new. It has uh, some, maybe not an impact factor yet, uh, but we see if you look at these statistics that we have three years of uh, well, relatively uh, good inflow about 50, 60 uh, uh, submissions, but in, a, in the last couple of years now that we get um, a more yeah, uh, experience ourselves, uh, but also the journal has more impact. We had a, a, a quite a high number of, of articles that are well cited, so we really see it's, go, it's growing uh, exponentially in terms of, of submissions. And at this moment, it's really growing that much that it's hard to keep up as an editorial board. So I think on the one hand, that's good news. On the other hand, we need to take some action uh, there. Uh, which is really uh, uh, sometimes surprised, but also um, uh, yeah, not surprised because we, we we work quite hard on, on developing the journal and promoting it and uh, involving people to contribute to this journal. So we see a lot of in, uh, input and a lot of submissions. Um, also talking about downloads, um, well, you see definitely the growing um, performance of the journal. At the first month, uh, there it was counted uh, 2,000 uh, downloads uh, a month. And at the moment, it's about 40,000. So of course, you can you can tell it's it's a huge in increase, and it has to do with a number of uh, yeah I think good special issues that we have with high quality researchers um, and a number of papers. For instance, on Airbnb, we published one of the uh, leading papers on Airbnb. Um, we had one on uh, uh, over tourism before it was called over tourism visitor pressure. Uh, also, articles that are that are really well cited. So, um, yeah, I think that really contributes to the visibility of the journal that it is cited. And once one article is cited, your journal gets um, yeah more uh, eyeballs, so to say. Uh, and from one thing comes the other. And also, if you put it in a uh, graph, you can see the number of downloads, uh, well, uh, monthly growing towards 40 to 50,000 downloads. And I think for a relatively young journal, that's quite uh, quite good. And also our impact factor is growing uh, year by year. Because of this, we see that our articles are cited uh, more and more. So also, uh, um, yeah, we, we can grow, we can apply for different uh, search engines uh, uh, and indexing. Uh, yeah, that's a process that, that you will uh, that you have to go through. Um, it's a growth process. So also when we started with the journal, it, we did not uh, say, well, we need to, within three years, have the best journal uh, ever. No, this will take time to grow. Um, always good to reflect on why does it perform well? Uh, I think it was already mentioned earlier, uh, we experienced fast article processing. I think that's really helpful. So at the moment an article is accepted, it does not take very long before it is um, uh, available online. Uh, early site was well explained. Uh, I think it's really important. So when an article um, is accepted for publication and it is processed ready to uh, um, to be launched, uh, it's it's already online and it can be found and it can be cited and it can be shared by the, the authors. And I think that's important to, to have at the early stage maximum impact and later on it will be part of a uh, um, of an issue but it's all uh, early uh, available. I think that's important. Um, I think our, our journal also performs well because of support from Emerald regarding the, the indexing and, and the ranking. It's important to have um, uh, to be part of. Um, uh, yeah, uh, your journal needs to be found, and I think that's important. And the impact factors count, and also the higher ranked. Um, researchers, they will look for impact factors and they will look for, for those because it counts for their CVs and their uh, uh, tenure tracks, for instance. So it's important to pay attention to this. And I think Emerald is very um, helpful there and also really supportive. And uh, yeah, it's part of the, uh, the contract as well. But I think that's really important um, support. Uh, and also support from Emerald in terms of practical matters. Uh, of course, if you have um, guest editors uh, who are unfamiliar with technology and uh, there's always someone available and, and our experience is that um, uh, the, the communication is, is very quick, prompt, and I think that helps. Um, 
And also, I think what we see is that that uh, Emerald is developing itself as well. I think uh, you should take that into account and maybe include that in the presentation uh, earlier as well. But that, the Emerald is also evolving. Uh, the new new uh, uh, possibilities. Uh, we now have uh, altmetrics within our journal that we can see how often it is shared on social media, for instance. Um, uh, also, when uh, people contribute to uh, reviewing our journals, they can. Uh, get credits for this through uh, Publons. So that's, that's stuff that we, that, that, that's great. So also we, um, yeah, we can show our, our gratitude and we can help even the reviewers uh, further in their careers. I think that's important. Um, it, well, as I said, oh, sorry. Uh, as I said, the special issues, they, they allow us also to, uh, to have a good performance. So we can actually program themes. So we can ask on particular themes and we can ask, uh, uh, academics to contribute to this and involve uh, involve them. Um, also what we do ourselves is to promote journal very actively via our own social media of our institute, the ETFI, European Tours and Futures Institute. So definitely look into our uh, social media as well just to see how we do this. I think that's nice to, uh, to do. And what we just um, a couple of years ago, what we did is have an open call for members for the editorial board. So people who want to do reviews and also uh, submit articles. Uh, we had an open call, we shared this on Trinet, for instance, um, uh, and it, it draw attention to the, to the journal. Uh, I think we had about 300 people interested to join this, uh, this editorial board, um, and that, that really helped to, to promote it. Uh, and also, we, we have now about 50 people um, as part of this board who are very active as, as reviewers, uh, because probably if you have experience as, a, as an editor, it's sometimes quite hard um, to have uh, reviewers as on standby uh, at any uh, moment in time. And I think this really contributes. Uh, and at this moment, we are also even, uh, we, we have a similar approach for uh, an uh, associate editor. So that's quite exceptional that we have this, uh, that, that we do this. But we need, we have high uh, work pressure for, for our journal. As I said, we have good, uh, uh, number of submissions at the moment but that also allows us to grow and to expand our, our academic community um, so well we were very pleased of course with how the journal works and how it performs so uh, last year we decided to extend the contract with emerald for uh, an additional five years so uh, we also have continuity so we also have a, a good um, future perspective um, and also that's something we, we uh, hope to do in the near future, that we move from one issue a year to four issues, because we see that our journal is growing, uh, the impact is growing, so we might expand this. Um, but of course, that comes with costs, and the co it's a platinum uh, open access journal, so the costs are, you know, we have to cover the costs ourselves, so we need to get support for that. And that's, uh, as you probably know, uh, sometimes um, uh, that takes time. Um, these are my experiences. I think it would be nice uh, to, to have an, uh, a discussion if there, if there are questions, uh, remarks. I think that's really helpful to, um, yeah, to talk about. Um, I just shared my experience, some insights into how we have, how we operate our journal and how the journal performs. But I can imagine the questions from your side uh, are really helpful to talk about this uh, further. Please do not hesitate to ask any question. Um, uh, maybe if you know, the Netherlands, we tend to be very open and very direct. So uh, do not hesitate to, to ask any questions about basically anything. Uh, the more open, um, I would say, the better. So uh, I would say, the, the, yeah, uh, the floor is open. Yes, yes. Thank you, Dr. Harman, for sh sharing your uh, journal management experience. And uh, yeah, we can see it's a young but very strong journal and it's grow keep growing up now and uh, now we're going to move on to the q a session okay uh my colleagues in the background have passed over some questions uh i'm not sure we can answer them all here we will see but if we cannot answer then all we will use email to answer you back later after the session so please don't worry if your question is not answered here all right, the first question is for Dr. Harman. Uh, our audience has seen that uh, the submissions has have grown a lot since 2015. 
and uh, they would like to know like how do you, how does your journal to attract those papers? Yeah, indeed, uh, we have really uh, exponential growth. Um, I think it is a combination of our open access. Uh, I think that's really important. Um, I think if you would search uh, for open access journals in tourism, um, there are just a limited number. There are really open access, uh, 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 platinum open access. I think that is something that really contributes to this. Um, the other contribution is that we um, on purpose invited uh, editors for special issues and we have the higher ranked people in, um, uh, yeah, in, in academia. Uh, I think that's also really important because they will invite the people from their network and if they are yeah, create high quality uh, uh, articles, then their colleagues most likely uh, are going to do so as well, and they are responsible for for such a journal, such an issue. So they will see, they will do their best to have high quality output. And of course, if you have familiar, uh, well-known people who are easily found, um, of course, that will contribute to uh, yeah to the journal its visibility. And I think that that that's really uh, really important. Uh, next to the indexing and a ranking of the journal, I think that's that's crucial because if, you can, if your journal cannot be found in Scopus, Science Direct, uh, Google Scholar, you're nowhere. Uh, and I think that that's what you need. And also that you need to have a good uh, track record, you need to have experience, you need to have uh, good articles, citations. Um, if that grows a bit, I mean, then you can kind of apply for the, for a next a next step. You can uh, grow um, over time. So I think the combination of this um, worked. And as I said, also what helped is to have this open call for for members of the editorial board. It's just to create awareness of the journal. Uh, immediately, if you send it out in Trinet, I don't know how many people are uh, subscribed to this, but thousands. They immediately see, hey, there's a journal of tourism futures. Hey, it's open access. Oh, what is it? Is it something for me? And people will look for it. And then it's, it's somewhere in the back of their minds. And um, when they will submit, maybe a year after, I mean, it takes a year or two sometimes to develop an article, a manuscript. Um, yeah, then you will see that, that we see that it's now growing. Um, yeah, at, at, at a really a high rate. <laughs> so that's nice. I think that's the combination. I would say that's my answer. Yeah, yes, yes. And uh, yeah. And we here have another question is that for Dr. Harman as well. And the audience would love to know that uh, how exactly does your journal collaborate with Emerald? Is there mm -hmm. any like pattern of collaboration between Emerald and your journal? What do you mean in terms of pattern, you say? Okay. Yeah, because like uh, the audience said that uh, do we have to like run in for the journal first and then ask Emerald to supervise or acknowledge the journal? And uh, uh, could you elaborate more on how do you collaborate with Emerald? Okay, yeah, I think um, uh, of course we make make use of all of the, the, the systems run by Emerald, the manuscript central system where all journals are, are uh, uh, come in, where you can process everything. I think that's um, uh, yeah, really important, but I think it's also quite quite general for for uh, for journals. But I I think the most contact and the most collaboration we have is more on a kind of a strategic level. I think that's one one part of it. How are we going to develop our journal and what does it take to do so? So and how can Emerald then help? Uh, as I said, also Emerald is evolving. So like uh, this alt metrics, they also allow you to draw attention to your journal. So that's something that we discussed then with, with Emerald kind of on a continual uh, uh, basis. Um, but also there's um, the, kind of the non-stop support. Um, if you have, um, uh, I mean, it's it's still a, uh, the work of people. So a lot of things, miscommunication, stuff that happens. Um, I mean, you you have to be keen on this and, and you try to solve this together with, with each other. If something is, is uh, you know, there, there are always technical uh, the, the things that need to be solved. Uh, because of whatever, uh, sometimes human error. Um, but I think that's something that we collaborate on um, uh, both uh, very uh, efficiently. And um, yeah, I think that uh, that, that works. So it's all, on the one hand, very operational day by day uh, communication, and on the other hand, uh, a more strategic collaboration. 
Yeah. Uh, we see that Emerald comes with a lot of suggestions how we can improve the journal. And, and on the other hand, we have our own ideas and um, our own questions, our own ambitions. And now we talk about, okay, but how are we going to realize these ambitions? What does it take? Do you have suggestions? And I think that collaboration that, uh, that yeah, the, well, the performance of the journal shows mm -hmm. it works. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see. Judy, do you have anything to add or to further elaborate on the collaboration model from your side? Yeah, well, in terms of collaboration, because uh, for my part, I, I per, per, uh, at the moment I'm supporting about 11 journals um, uh, that's in the EPS portfolio. And it really differs from journal to journal because every journal, the editors have different expectations and they have different performance. They're in different stage because we have new journals uh, that's new launch that's still at the very beginning stage of, 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 of growing their submissions and finding answers, find, finding reviews. But we also have more mature journals that's already trying to accumulate more citations or to get into indexing. So yeah, it really uh, depends what what sort of the goal the editorial team uh, has set, and also because um, we do this regular performance report, so we tend to discuss the result of the report with the editor and see what can be improved or what what sort of good good things that can be kept or what sort of things we can uh, develop further. So. Yeah, we, we're kind of quite quite flexible in in, in terms of collaboration because it, it really depends on how the editorial teams prefer to work, uh, especially for my regions, because uh, they are all in different local languages. So they, they do have different local insights that the editor team bear in mind. So they will have like local feedback uh, to us what, what they're expecting because in different regions, they have different expectations as well. Yeah, so we tend to be flexible in that aspect. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's great. Yeah, since you've mentioned flexible, Judy, here we have another question from the audience saying that uh, can we combine different types of open access, such as uh, free paid by author and by, by the journal, like combine different types altogether? Uh, at the moment, for Emerald Published Services for EPS, we only have one option for it, just platinum or open access, because that's what the kind of open access we're promoting at the moment. So uh, uh, at this stage, we're just, uh, this is the only thing we offer, but we do are exploring the possibility of combining gold open access and platinum open access in the future uh, but that's still in an exploring stage so i can't give you anything concrete at this stage but yeah we, we do have we do know there's a, a need uh in in different regions that's looking for gold away as well yeah mm -hmm. yeah i see and uh, another question for dr Herman. Uh, the audience want to know that why didn't your journal choose to publish in a way where readers and authors pay to the university, like by subscription or APC? Yeah, I think that's a good question because, of course, it's uh, from an institute perspective uh, costly. Um, I think if you would compare this to um, other activities, um, I would say the costs are uh, very acceptable. To be honest, um, I mean, it's always a discussion with higher management in my case. Um, uh, now, what is the value? And I constantly say the value is part of um, you know everything we do. It's part of research, education, and we have the journal, and it contributes. And if you take the journal out, then it will uh, the whole uh, ecosystem will have an uh, it will impact on this. Um, but uh, I think very important why we chose for for platinum open access is that it is a new journal. You start with um, and, uh, well, this sounds maybe a bit strange, but we sound basically nothing. And nobody knows uh, your journal, who you are, what you do. And in order to attract um, uh, submissions, um, I think you lower a barrier. And of course, if you have to pay, um, then of course you have high expectations as a uh, author. Um, and I think you will uh, then, of course, look around. Um, uh, yeah, uh, maybe constantly. So we try to lower this, lower this barrier. And also, we were in a uh, kind of fortunate position at the moment, to, uh, at the moment of 2015, that allowed us to uh, basically do, do this, to have the choice. We we have to, we had the funding. We could we could do this. 
Um, but I think if I look back on, on that choice, I think it was a very wise choice because it allows you to really launch uh, the journal. And otherwise, I think the, the uh, kind of this exponential growth in five years, maybe it take uh, if you have a uh, more uh, that, that uh, authors pay for their contributions, then it might take ten years or or even longer, um, because you just add barriers. Um, and I think that that is for us, um, yeah, the ambition to keep this uh, platinum open access approach. Um, but it's a trade-off, it's definitely a trade-off uh, uh, from an institute perspective. So can you financially support the, the approach? Um, and indeed, I think what, what Judy correctly mentioned, uh, it really depends on the ambitions and the goals of the institute and, and the editorial board. And in our case, our, our ambition is to have an impact on this particular topic of tourism futures. As a result of that, our choice was to go for this platinum open access. Uh, if you uh, have a different goal, um, yeah, maybe other subscription models fit fit better. Uh, so definitely um, match the choice with the goals that you have for such a journal. Uh, then I think the answer will present itself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I see. Yeah, there's a, another uh, very looks like a follow up question since you've mentioned found. Yeah, uh, the audience would love to know like how do you find the found for the EPS? Like in Japan, many associations are run by members fee, and uh, the total mm -hmm. amount is not that large. So sure. it will be very helpful for you to uh, share your experience on found. All right. Yeah. EPS. Yeah. Um, well, we, we are our institute is part of a, a, a applied science university, and our applied science university they have budgets for uh, uh, publishing and also to support open access publishing. Um, in the Netherlands, actually, our uh, national authority on um, uh, research and education uh, and the, the, the big funding agency of the Netherlands, they support open access papers. So they will, uh, if they grant research grants, for instance, you have to publish open access. If not, you do not get your, your um, research grant. So that's something that's really important. And then as, a, uh, as, an, as an institute, well, my university where I'm based, they say, well, we try to contribute to this uh, and also allow our our own researchers to contribute, in this case, to, to this journal. Um, I, and we support a bit of this, but that's a small portion. That's, that's um, um, well, to be open, a couple of thousand euros. Uh, but the bigger uh, part that we, we, uh, that we pay is through the institute itself. We do all sorts of research projects um, uh, uh, either paid by university, also research grants, but also uh, contract activities, which is uh, sounds a bit um, uh, commercial, but we do pro uh, projects with the work field, with the industry. And out of that, we have a little bit of overhead. And out of that overhead, we pay for this journal. Um, that's the, the, the approach that we, uh, that we decided to, uh, uh, to take, uh, because, well, we can expand the number of researchers, but also have a social media uh, a manager we can have a journal so uh, as i said we we kind of think from an ecosystem perspective uh, then everything um, works works together so you need funding it's always tricky um but i think for in our case it uh, we we show that we were able to have a consistent uh, um, yeah funding flow so it's a combination um and now we're actually looking for a possible sponsor to move from three to four issues. And a possible sponsor could, in our case, be a other university. But we that's the thing that we are looking at. So we try to actually collaborate with another university. Um, and that's part of a discussion that we have. And, and soon we will have to have with Emerald to see whether that is possible and what it's, it all means for contracts. And that's that's a discussion that we will have then. But um, I think the funding aspect, it's, it's crucial, of course, uh, because if you cannot get the funding, yourself as an, as an institute or a university yeah, an alternative of course is a different subscription model you can imagine that that uh, as part of your choice then yes, yes, um, yes i might be able to add a little bit on that um because i i understand that in asia open access is still a bit more experimental concept it's mm. it's more like a trial state compared to europe or uk mm. so uh 
So we, uh, there's just an example. We have some journals published in, in Asia, East Asia. They're using this model as a co-sponsor. So you have more than one institution or more than one university that use a combined funding to support the journal so that yeah. the, the institution can have like a trial on open access publishing and to see how the journal performs uh, and then also a share responsibility on the funding so that the pressure won't be the load won't be that heavy on just one single institution yeah and association as well and yeah for example we we had uh we have an existing journal that's sponsored by entrepreneurship related association so it's like academic association not the university but because they work with more practitioners so they might got the fundings from sponsors from the the practitioners uh in the industry as well so that's also a way to source fundings for existing journals yeah yes Thank you, Judy. And uh, yes, yeah, since we are in like East Asia, and uh, many uh, uh, editors or journals are in their local language, so the audience would love to know: like, does EPS offer English translation service, or does EPS ever consider open to partner with journals using local language? Uh, at this stage, because Emerald at Emerald Publishing, all our systems and our colleagues are native. Most of our colleagues are native in English, so uh, we're more capable of providing support in English at the moment. But we do have existing journals that's published in English version with Emerald Publishing, and then they publish another version in local language on their own. So they have a self self publishing version in local language by the university and then an English version published by uh, Emerald Publishing. So they have two versions publishing alongside each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, I see. Yeah, and here comes another question for Dr. Hartman. Uh, what is the biggest difference you have observed after working with Emerald for your journal? Biggest difference? Um, well, the like any like obvious or disadvantages yeah. um wow of course we we uh, launched the journal together with emerald uh so the journal is one-to-one -one connected with emerald um wow i think it's, it's good a big uh, question. <laughs> sorry yes. uh, it, it's a big question <laughs> yeah. it's a big it's a big question and uh, to digest the question a bit um yeah, I was just thinking in terms of advantages of, of working working with you guys, um, and um, yeah, I think um, yeah, as I said, I think I already included all of the, the arguments in my in my presentation. Uh, um, yes. Yeah, yes. I, I would basically refer back to the presentation. Yeah. Right. I, I think uh, for that question, uh, I will like send out because uh, after the seminar like next week i will be compiling all the slides together and sending out to you, all of you via email so i think for this question you you may see the like the points that uh, dr hartman already made uh, in the past exactly. yeah, yeah. Yes. I will, otherwise i would repeat myself so yeah <laughs> and uh another and question the session, sorry yeah, just to it, add the session is also recorded so if you want to listen <laughs> again <laughs> and replay yes. that Yes, I think it's the last question because we're very close to closing now. Uh, the question for Dr. Harma is, has your journal received more or less papers after the pandemics prevail over the world since last year? What is the major impact of COVID-19 for your journal and how do you face yeah, this good, challenge? Good question. Yeah, um, yes. uh, we were a bit worried at, at the, the start of the, of, of course, of the pandemic, um, but I think uh we saw a really an increase uh of course as you know the impact is as uh, particularly in tourism uh leisure events industry has been really huge so also the, the the attention from academics to this topic and the impacts of of covid 19 on tourism uh is of course well it draws attention to, to to academics so we have um a lot of input on um 
papers the focus on on the impacts of COVID uh, COVID nineteen. So actually, I think it it contributed to the number of uh, uh, of submissions and also contributed to the um, uh, questions from uh, from researchers who ask us, can we do a special issue on this topic with your journal? So that's also something that we experienced that people actually ask those type of questions to us um, by even leading leading authors. Um, so. It actually helped us in that sense, if, uh, and it sounds a bit awkward, of course, but it helped us to develop the journal. Um, I see. Yeah, I think due to time limitation, I'm afraid the Q&A session has to stop here and move into the closing now. And uh, uh, please don't worry that uh, if your question is not answered here, we will uh, we will like uh, reply to you via email later after the session. So, all right, thank you, Dr. Herman. Thank you, Judy and my team. You're thank welcome. you all thank you for your time. Thank you for the questions. Yeah. Yeah. And the participation. So if you have like any other questions, please don't hesitate to contact us. Here is the contact information. And uh, yeah, I think we will be finished here. Anyone have anything else to add? Okay. Thank you all very much. Have a good day and a good evening. Stay healthy and stay safe. Thank you again and see you next time. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank bye. You bye. Bye. Bye.